Hello, wildlings. I'm your Creepsmith, and you found my Fear Forge. <laughs> Lucky you. Hey, kids. I may never understand this whole need for people to anthropomorphize, well, pretty much anything. Take, for instance, Mother Nature, one of the most enduring and ubiquitous mythical figures in the world. Uh, on the other hand, uh, people seem too eager to forget that the beloved universal source of all life is also an indiscriminate genocidal mass murderer of monstrous proportions. So, tonight, a tiny reminder. God's Mouth by Abracadaver. I huffed and I puffed under my breath as I stared into God's mouth. I felt like the big bad wolf ready to interrupt the three innocent little pigs as they hurriedly fortified their makeshift homes. I grinned at this thought and then turned my head to look for Margaret. It, oh, she was a couple of feet down the hill from the entrance of the cave holding a walking stick close to her petite breasts. Hurry up! I called down to her. I turned back to the cave still grinning. An old rotted sign outside read, God's Mouth Cave keep out. <laughs> what a tired cliche. Margaret finally made it to the entrance and stood beside me, almost doubled over and out of breath. I looked down and smiled. Check it out. I laughed. God's mouth. Wonder where Jesus' anus is. I chuckled to myself. Margaret was less amused. Give me the damn water bottle, she said, exasperated. The open bottle met her lips and for a moment, I felt peaceful in a way watching her drink that water actually i take that back the peaceful comment i mean it was more of a feeling sort of hard to put my finger on or give a name but i could settle for a nice content content seemed to be one of those words that manifest itself when natural human words seem to fail Again, it's an utter cliché, but it felt good to feel that strange, mixed-up sort of happy for once. I sighed and turned on my flashlight. I pointed it into the cave. A black void. God's mouth. This seemed like the antithesis of any kind of holy spirit. I turned again to Margaret. You ready? I asked. She was finally standing straight up, and she nodded. I clapped a friendly hand to her back, and we walked into God's mouth. The inside was not unlike the preview that I had glimpsed outside with my flashlight. Dark, dismal, and endlessly black. It seemed to stretch on endlessly no matter how I positioned the flashlight. The rocky terrain was damp and imposing. The last natural light slowly disappeared behind Margaret and I as we made our way deeper and deeper. I found it strange how soft and compelling the world around me now appeared, despite the stalactites, stalagmites, and other various rocky formations being so jagged. It seemed that even amongst the pointed teeth of, well, God, I could lay down and rest there forever. It was somehow comfortable. Apparently, Margaret did not agree. She shivered uncomfortably under my arm. I raised my eyebrow. Need your coat? I asked. I looked at her and made nonverbal communication as explicit as possible until I realized that we were lost in inky blackness of the mouth. I bit my lip and I waited, but she didn't respond. For a couple of minutes, we walked on in silence. She stopped and stood motionless, and then I stopped too. Why the hell are we even in here? She said. She sounded irritated. I shrugged, more to appease myself than her, and shoved my flashlight under my face. Bladed shadows obscured half my face, the other half illuminated in a wretched mask. Because it's spooky! I cried, chuckling. She didn't move or respond. I sighed. I thought you wanted to go, I said. I noticed how my voice echoed against the cave walls at any volume. I mean, I began again, scratching at my chin. 
You did say you wanted to go see some nature for our vacation. And you did sound impressed when I told you about my visit to Mammoth Caves a couple of years back, so... My voice trailed off. I could still sense her irritation. No, she said. I frowned. No. You wanted to go here. I wanted to go to a beach or something, but no. A cave. A cave, Nathan. She sounded more like the big bad wolf now. I know that you have this weird fetish for sp spelunking or something, but I don't really want to be dragged into it. Don't get me wrong, I'd love to go on a trip and get into nature and fresh air, but this... I could hear her arms flail and gesture about in the thick air. This is cave air, not fresh air. This air is practically fermenting. Plus, isn't this illegal? Can we please just leave? We both stood there. The only sound that could be heard was the electricity in the air being stifled and smothered by the damp atmosphere. Finally, I just began to walk. I didn't hear Margaret follow me, but I kept moving forward. Then, Nathan, she said, stop. Just please stop. So I stopped. I'm sorry, she said. I could hear her moving closer to me. I'm tired and I'm not used to running and climbing around and the like. I'm, I'm just tired. It's okay, I said. She gripped my arm. Really, it's fine. I shook my head. Which way's out? I don't remember. I could feel Margaret physically pause. Neither one of us could remember. Somehow, in the confusion of our argument, I'd forgotten which way we'd been moving. Idiot, I thought to myself. I should have brought a goddamn rope or something to trail from the entrance of the cave. I, I felt like I had to take some action, so without much thought, I turned 180 degrees back the way we'd come and said, This way. We walked for what seemed to be, had to be, hours. My feet were tired and sore, and I could hear Margaret's groans from behind me. She held my hand tightly, and I felt terrible. This was all my fault. Then I froze. Hey, hey, I said. Put your hand out. Feel this rock. I could hear Margaret's bare palm press against the stone. Isn't this, like, abnormally warm? I said. She didn't say anything. I began to work my way along the wall, feeling it as I went, shining the flashlight in front of me. Suddenly I felt a sharp pain on my head as the ceiling of God's mouth met with my scalp. Ow! Shit! I shouted. Nathan? Are you okay? Margaret asked. She seemed on the verge of panic now. I'm fine, I said. Just please calm down. We'll get out of here soon, I promise. I started again, pointing my flashlight upwards now to see the ceiling above me. It seemed to be getting narrower. That was strange. Listen, um, Margaret? Hon? I said through clenched teeth. I think we gotta turn around. Margaret, next to me, just sighed. Again, we walked for a decent length. I kept my flashlight pointed upwards this time, and sure enough, the space in the cave seemed to become smaller and smaller. If there was any resonating light left in God's mouth aside from my flashlight, I'm sure Margaret would have been able to see the whites of my eyes spreading in panic. We were completely lost. I let go of Margaret's hand and began to feverishly feel my way along the walls. No, Nathan, I heard her shout. I just kept going. We had to get out. If we were lost, no one would be able to find us. I kept feeling along the wall until I abruptly hit a corner again. Fuck, I said out loud. Um, this seems to be a dead end. I spun on my heel. Margaret? 
No answer. Shit. I began to repeat my process again, almost running as I felt the wall run past my fingertips. Cool, damp rocks and jagged spears. Suddenly I found myself at a corner again. Fuck, fuck, fuck. I shouted. Margaret! I was belting her name out now. In the corner of the cave's mall where I had been thwarted so many times already, I heard a noise. It sounded like muffled static from a television. I pressed my ear against the rock. It seemed to be getting even warmer now. I heard the faint sounds of Margaret on the other side of the rock. She was screaming. No, 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 I said. No, 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 no. I began running haphazardly into the walls around me. With dawning realization came a wave of sheer horror. There was no entrance. There was no exit. Only these four corners and me. I could feel the blood began to trickle from the cut that I had managed to get by bashing my body into the cave's walls. They were closing in on me. They were coming in for the kill, and soon they would be pressing on my skull and crushing my ribcage. I sat there for hours, waiting for death. My flashlight was becoming dim and blinking. And finally, I felt the soft touch of these rocky walls press against my back. I began to cry as I lay down on the ground. I let my flashlight roll on the small hills of stone. As I quietly stayed prone, tears dripping down my face, I turned and looked at the flashlight. In its last fading beams of light, it pointed at something not far away from my face. I squinted in the darkness. My eyes widened, and I felt tears fall even harder from my face. The rocks were piercing my skin now, and the blood was running from all sides. There, in the last of my flashlight, was the appetizer. The spotlight shone on a hand whose nails were painted red, and I screamed in agony as I watched God's mouth chew its latest meal. Yeah. So the next time you want to go somewhere pretty and pristine, isolated and untouched, just you remember the other side of the natural equation. Stay scary, wildlings. Keep in mind how overrated caving is and make the most of your nights. Above ground if you can manage. <laughs>